Good to see you again. It's always great to see you in person. I know. <laughs> Jose and I have known each other only virtually through Zoom yeah. for the past two years. Yeah, like it's uh, yeah, we met once in person over in LA that one time, and uh, yeah, for the most part, we see each other every Saturday, so which or at least as often as I can make it over there. Absolutely, and I'm always happy when we get to see you. Likewise. Well, the reason that I'm chatting with Jose today is because they have put out a very new middle grade graphic novel called Twin Cities, uh, which is from Penguin Random House. And Jose, if uh, viewers at home are unfamiliar with the graphic novel, would you mind telling them about the premise of the series? Would love to. So yeah, it's a, gra it's a graphic novel by Random House Graphic, and it's called Twin Cities, and it's about these two twins that they graduate sixth grade, and they live in the border town of Mexicali, Mexico. And once they finish sixth grade, one of them, Teresa, decides that she wants to continue her education on the American side in the city of Calexico, while her brother, Fernando, wants to continue his education on the Mexican side in Mexicali. And... That starts causing a schism in between their twinship or their, their, their siblinghood because they start being exposed to different cultural aspects that are very permanent in, uh, in, in this very specific city. Absolutely. And Jose, what can you tell us, especially given your own background, your own lived experience, what was the inspiration for this story? Uh, specifically growing up in Mexicali. So, uh, so yeah, so, so I wrote the book specifically because I love my hometown and I'm very proud to be there. From, from, I'm very proud to be from there. And yeah, like it's a, I mean, it sounds kind of like, you know, you know, like almost like a pulling from a book or something, but yeah, I was walking around and I had the idea while, you know, while I was like, oh, what would have, ha what would happen? Because when I was growing up, I had the opportunity to, to go to an American school, but I decided not to. I decided to stay in on the Mexican side and go to a, to a Mexican middle school. But of course I kind of kept wondering what would have happened had I chosen other words otherwise, and then. Some of my siblings did go to an American school, so we started talking. And then just living in a border town, you get to be exposed to this culture class between Mexican culture and American culture and Mexican entertainment versus American entertainment. So it just seemed like I had all these threads to pull from. Uh, and, you know, and I just got to writing. <laughs> so. And you really, in the book, you really do get to display or to illustrate that differentiation in culture. What do you hope that readers take away from that, that they, they really take away from the story? I think what I want readers to take away uh, you know, from the story is, because it takes place in middle school, which is quite the time. It's for, a tough it, time. It's a, it's, it's a very tough time, you know, all things considered, and anywhere you're from. So I think what I want most readers to take away is that whatever you're experiencing during that liminal stage in life, it's very real and everyone's perspective can be very valid and can be very authentic. Because um, one of the things that I was trying to do with the book is I wanted to present a fair perspective to people who choose to stay on the Mexican side and people who choose to go to an American school and, you know, and develop over there. So I hope that readers kind of can see themselves and see things that they have gone through and how both options can be their own thing, both ups and downs and what have you. So, yeah, I think that's kind of, that's mostly what I was aiming for. Absolutely. And and for you, you are both the writer and the artist. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about balancing? I mean, there are so many duties that come from telling a story both through words and through the sequential art itself. What did that creative process look like for you? So there's a cliche that says uh, writing is rewriting. And, and I think that that's, that's very true. And I think that most people kind of see that from like the editorial part, right? Like you write a draft and then you have to put, but as someone who loves making comics, I'm also on the side that even the drawing part is writing. And for me, even the coloring part is writing. So like, so throughout the entire process of making the book, I was constantly thinking of like, well, how can this story be better? How can it be tighter? Uh, how can I close these loops? Um, and I do try to work from general to specific. So, you know, I start with an outline, I start with thumbnails, and then I go into pencils. So as the story goes along, so does the process, and so does the, uh, so does the specificity, such as, well, how does a character feel when they say that? Like, I have the line, and I have the composition, but do I have, like, the right emotion or the right facial expression? So that's all part of the, that, that to me is all part of the writing. Um, and that's how I approach it. And that's like, that's, that's what keeps me engaged. So that way, there's never a stage where I feel that I'm just stuck. Like there's always, in every stage, I'm like, 
what am I adding onto this? Like, what's another layer that goes into the story? So. Absolutely, that makes total sense. Um, Jose, I don't want it to be lost on us that we're at Comic-Con right now. Yeah. Which is very exciting. Yeah. It's been three years since many of us have been here. Three, yes. yes. Um, what is the most exciting thing for you in being back to Comic-Con? What are you most looking forward to about being here? So I love tabling. Like it's, uh, I really do. I, I love being, uh, I love tabling. But this year I'm not tabling. So the most exciting part so far has been running around the convention floor, just saying hi to my friends, seeing people that I haven't seen in a few years, uh, seeing how they're doing, and just kind of getting a vibe to see that. I mean, it's been a difficult couple of years for a lot of people for multiple reasons. Like, let's acknowledge that. So it's really cool to see that things are picking back up. And kudos to Comic-Con for the way that they're organizing things. I'm very appreciative of the vaccination checkings, like the, the, the mask requirements. So like, it seems like everyone is very much on the same page that we want to have fun, we want to keep this going. So, uh, but yeah, the most fun part for me has been to just go say hi to people that I haven't seen. And like, it's, uh, that's, that's, what, that's what has me excited. Yourselves included, <laughs> family Aww. first included. <laughs> and like, the feeling is mutual, Jose. Well, for our viewers out there who would like to pick up a copy of Twin Cities, what is the best way to do so? And what's the best way to find you? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at J-O-E-P-I. I'm also on Instagram at, at the Joe Pie, as in at T-H-E-J-O-E-P-I. Um, the best ways to get the book, I mean, you can find them in bookstores, you can find them on comic book shops, uh, you, can, you can also get it through online distributors. If I had to plug one, uh, bookshop.org, because they do a wonderful job at supporting local bookshops. So, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, it's, it's available through Random House Graphics, so it's available in, uh, in many types of stores. Excellent. Well, Jose, always wonderful to chat with you, whether virtually or in person. Likewise. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, likewise. It's <laughs> Excellent. Well, viewers, be sure to check out their work. It is absolutely amazing. It's called Twin Cities from Penguin Random House. As, as Jose said, you can pick it up at all booksellers as well as online. But again, this is Barbara Dillon from Fanbase Press here at San Diego Comic-Con. You can check out more interviews just like this one at fanbasepress.com.